Hello guys, welcome to Deep Course and in today's video we will discuss lead code question 1140 that says stone game 2. So guys, although this question is difficult to understand as understanding the example part is difficult here. So guys, if you have any confusion in understanding the question part and also building up the logic, then yeah, this video is for you. So make sure you watch this video till the end, like the video and subscribe to our channel. So here you are given two players, Alice and Bob and they both uh, uh, will play a game. So here the game is that uh, there is a number of uh, piles of stone arranged in a row and each pile has a positive integer number piles of i that represent the number of stones in that pile. So if you see in the first test case this is the piles that you are given. So here this first pile has two stone, the second has seven, the third is nine, four and four. Now initially Alice uh, will start the game right she will take the first turn and there is one integer m so m equals to 1 here on each player's turn the player can take all the stone in the first x remaining piles so yeah initially m equals to 1 so twice of m would be nothing but 2 so and x is nothing but any variable from 1 to 2 okay initially x would be nothing but uh, anything either 1 or 2 right so this line says that on each player's turn the player can take any stones from the x remaining piles okay and after that we set m equals to maximum of m and x so this line is a bit uh, difficult to understand so don't worry uh, we will go through the examples that will help you uh, make this easy so further the game continues until the stones have been taken all the stones are taken and assuming both alice and bob play optimally we need to return maximum number of stones alice can get okay so we have to play this game in favor of alice so that she can get the maximum number of stones now guys if you take a look at the first example uh, here you are given two seven nine four four okay so initially alice will start so now alice has two choices right why two choices let me explain you okay so here initially m is what m is one right as we can see here m initially is one now what can be the x x can be nothing but either one or two right because x is between one and twice of m so that is between one and two so here alice will start the game so she will start so she has x no x right she can take x piles at max so either she can take one pile or she can take two piles okay got this clear till here now further after if she takes one pile then what is m m will change to maximum of m and x so initially m is one now what is at this point what is x uh, at this point x is also 1 right so yeah m will still remain 1 but at this point x becomes 2 so m changes to what m changes to 4 m changes to m changes to also 2 not 4 m changes to 2 right so uh, and whereas here m will remain 1 because the maximum of m and x uh, we have to set for m so it is still 1 but here it is 2 now in the next round uh, the next round is for bob now bob had choices right Bob could take either one or Bob could take both. Okay. Got it. Now here Bob will take both because Bob would know if. Uh, see Bob will do what at this point Bob will Bob will think. See let me show you. So at this stage, after taking one stone pile, Bob will think that after this, if uh, uh, Alice has next turn, then what Alice will do? See. So Alice can do what? Alice has taken this, then Bob has taken this. Then Alice can take both this, right? Alice can take both this in order to maximize and play optimally. So in this case, in this case, Bob will remain with what? Four in the next round, next to next round. So that Bob's total would be what? 11 whereas in the other case let me show you here the first is already taken by Alice the second is already taken by Bob now if a Bob see here Bob has choices to take two because uh, x can be twice of m at max uh, here at this point uh, Bob can take two stone two piles of stone so if Bob can take will take two piles of stone then Bob can have greater total see initially it it was only 11 but here it is 16 so Bob can get a better answer so yeah bob will also play optimally and think of the future right so that's why 
Bob will take both the stones, and if the remaining stones Alice will take, then too Bob will have greater score right, or the maximum score Bob can achieve. So yeah, in this way, Bob will get 16, whereas Alice will get 10. Now this is uh, one thing that we derive from this. But here, uh, in the second case, that was already there, where Alice took two of the stones, and after that, M turns out to be two. Correct? So yeah, if M is two, then X is nothing but one uh, to four because twice of M is nothing but four, and the remaining stones are uh, stones are three. So Alice can take all the three stones in order to maximize. Yeah. So in that case, the Bob score is uh, uh, sorry. Bob will take all the score in order to maximize. So in this case, Alice score would remain nothing but nine. Here it is nine. But here, if you see, Alice was able to get a total of ten. So yeah, Alice would see that if she takes two stones at a time then that is uh, assured that uh, she won't be able to score better or better than bob bob will uh, be in a benefit benefit in this stage right so she would never take this step alice would never take this step so instead she would go here now from this point yeah bob will also see that if uh, bob takes one stone then alice would have taken next two stones and the remaining one stone would be left for alice and for that in this situation bob would uh, get only 11 stones but if Bob would, Bob would have taken two stones and in the next turn Alice would she would take all the next two stones remaining then to Bob would be in a better condition so yeah Bob will say th Bob will take both the stones 7 and 9 both the piles 7 and 9 because that would be the best or the optimal way for Bob to solve this right Bob to get maximum number of stones and yeah that's this is this way that so this is the most optimal way for uh, Bob and Alice if they both play optimally so then this would be the answer right. So guys I hope that this is a bit unconfusing to understand but the approach part is very much simple right. But before moving to approach let's also take a look at the example too. So till now as you have, might have seen that we are uh, making some of the choices at each step the, both Bob and Alice have some choices and based on the choices we can draw a recursion tree. Let's uh, try to think how we can draw a recursion tree. So in the second example, we are given these piles of stones and initially M is 1. So X is nothing but between 1 and 2. So for an example, let's uh, for the early turn, X is uh, at least take one piles and that means X equals to 1. Okay, then this is the situation, at least take one piles. And in the next situation, what at least do? At least take, uh, she takes two piles of stone. So if she could take two piles of stone, that means X equals to 2 and then M, turn, M turns out to be 2. And that means X is now nothing but between 1 and 4. Right, that means Bob could Bob can take any number of piles between one and four. So if Bob can take one pile, two pile, three pile, as well as four piles of stone. So in this situation, Alice will see that if she takes two piles of stone, then Bob would ga gain the maximum, and she would remain with three stones at at the end. Right. So yeah, she would never take this approach. Correct, because if she will she she will see that in the future. Bob can take all the piles and she would be remaining with nothing. So this is not an optimal way for Alice. So she would not take two piles. Okay. Now from here, uh, after this, Bob's turn, right? So Bob has choices either to take one or two stones because currently M is one. So X is nothing but between one. X is nothing but ranging between one and two twice of M. So Bob can take one pile or two piles. Now Bob will see, see let's uh, go through this, if Bob take two piles of stone then Alice has a choice, then M turns out to be two so Alice can take all the three piles so in if the Bob will take two piles then Alice she will play optimally and she would take all the three piles remaining then this turns out to be loss for a Bob okay because if a Bob takes two piles then that would be better situation right so yeah Bob will only go through this part and won't take this path. Now from here, suppose the Bob takes one pile of stone and M is still one. Now after this, Alice again has the choices to either take one pile or two pile. Now if Alice she takes one pile of stone, then this would be the condition, right? She took one pile of stone, and she took two piles of stone. But if she took two piles of stone, then M turns out to be two, and yeah, Bob will take the remaining two piles. So in this condition, Alice will left out with four plus three, seven plus one, eight, eight stones, right? But this is not optimal for Alice to take two piles of stone. So she would only take one pile of stone. So th since this is not optimal, she won't take two piles and this she will move carry on with a one pile. So one M remains one. Now again, Bob has choices either to take one pile 
or both two two pi right because x is nothing but between ranging from one and two so if x that means if uh, now bob takes only one pile of stone then alice would uh, would yeah would simply take two piles the in this in this case bob answer bob will get six stones at the rem uh, at the end so bob will find this as a loss so bob will take two piles of stone right 5 plus 4 9 10 11 so at the end bob will get at least 11 right so because this was a bob turn either to take one pile or two piles so if bob take one pile then he, he would be in a loss and yeah bob will play optimally so this would be the case he would take two piles so yeah in this way at the end if you see for alice alice score would be nothing but 10400 plus 3 plus 1 104 and if you check the answer it's 104 So yeah, guys, both Alice and Bob will think of the future. What would be the beneficial if and they both know, they both know that the other person will play optimally. And yeah, by seeing that, they will take each step as optimal step in order to get the maximum return. So yeah, guys, as you know that here we are making optimal choices. And yeah, to solve this question, the recursion is the foremost intuition, right? Now, uh, before going to the coding part, let me know that what are the changing variables here. The changing variable is first whose turn, that is either Ali's turn or Bob's turn. So here we will take a turn integer variable where one would represent it is a turn for Ali's, and two would represent, uh, sorry, zero would represent it is a, sorry, a uh, bit mistake. One would represent it's a Bob's turn, and zero would represent it's turn for Ali's. We also have to mention what variable m, right? Um, to to help us to find x right this will help us to find x and third variable that is the index or the index of piles right so yeah guys we have three changing variables here that we need to handle so in this recursive function i just took these three variables i check for this terminating condition that means no more piles of stone remaining then return zero now here i took one result variable so what we will try to do is if it is a list turn then we would try to maximize result is maximus max if it is bob turn then result is minimize okay result would be minimize so if you can see here that uh, if it is turn equals to zero that means if it is a list turn then we try to maximize the result and if it is bob turn we will try to minimize the result now here what i did is if it is bob turn then we are trying to compare we are trying to minimize so in order to compare with this for function Uh, since this is mean we have to take some max value right so if this is bob so for bob we are taking this right if because we are comparing with a mean so yeah if it is bob turn so we will take some bigger larger number into our result else if it is a list turn then we will take minus 1 right because here we, we are taking max correct so yeah we have to compare with some minimum value got this now here we are simply here iterating from x equal to 1 up to twice of m and n minus 1 now what is this n minus 1 this is remaining piles remaining number of piles right so x will must be less than n minus 1 that is remaining number of piles right it is obvious right if the number of piles remaining are 3 and x equals to 4 then that is a invalid right we cannot take x equal to 4 if the remaining piles are 3 so yeah x will travels from 1 up to twice of m and n minus 1 minimum of both this thing and we will simply add the piles of the current uh, index that is i plus x minus 1 to the score and we will add the score so here you would think that why we have added score here and not here because at the end we need to return the maximum score or the maximum number of stone at least have so yeah we don't care about the bob so yeah we didn't uh, store the score here okay and yeah this changing variable are uh, this one so if it is uh, at least turn that is turn equal to 0 then we will pass one so next turn is bob and then the index uh, i plus x okay because x stones we have taken from the current index i so it's i plus x and the maximum of m and x right that's how what we will set we are setting for m as we can see here this is what we are setting for m value so yeah guys that's how we uh, code for the recursive function and and, and at the initial stages we start with the earliest turn so it is 0 i is 0 and m is 1 as m initialized as 1 so this is the recursive code but as you guys know that recursive solution won't work and we have to memorize it so yeah we simply took a 3d dp so uh, a vector of size 2 n plus 1 and n plus 1 so by 2 because turn has only values like either 0 or 1 so it's uh, size of 2 we can take and this both can go up to size of n that is the size of this piles arm so yeah that's how we wrote the memorization code this is some simply recursion code but 
at two stage we simply updated one stage we up updated the dpi and we utilize it to reduce the number of sub problems so now talking about the time and space complexity this space complexity is easier it is nothing but we go of 2 into n into n right it is 2 into n into n and the same would be the time complexity right because we are only trying to fill this 3d dpi array the of size this n plus that would be some recursive stack uh, that would be taken so yeah guys that's all for this video if you guys have understood this recur this up uh, this recursion tree then the coding part was very much simple here as we have to find out what are the changing variables and based on that we need to code so yeah guys that's all for this video if you guys have any doubts then do let me know in the comment section make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel thank you